I will now introduce our next speaker, Dr. Anupam Saraf. Uh, he is internationally renowned expert of governance of complex systems and holds a PhD degree in designing sustainable systems from University of Gron Groningen, the Netherlands. He has worked at several organizations across three continents contributing to leadership, innovation, strategy, and has uh, performed various roles like leader, CXO, and even ministerial positions. A board member in various public and private sector organizations, he contributes designing the future and ensuring uh, the risk in a changing environment. Some of his pioneering work has been in the form of extensive research and modeling of global, national, and regional economic, environmental, and energy systems across several and dozens of countries. Dr. Saraf has persistently followed up with state and central governments on their action to increase carbon sinks and reduce carbon emissions. He has now launched the Short Now initiative to move the focus of decision making from short term to the ones who are short now, that is the child's children which are born now. We are truly honored to have him to come to speak with us today. And I now request Dr. Saraf to deliver his speech, uh, problems of today and solutions of yesterday. Thank you. Very good evening to all of you. Uh, I guess you're all tired. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the fact that you are here, I think you all recognize that the world today that we live in has a lot of problems. And I think you recognize that increasingly these problems are being regarded as uh, almost too formidable to deal with. And definitely it appears that individual action seems to be insufficient to solve many of these problems because they are not local, but they have become global. But interestingly, if we look at the last 100 years, the last 100 years is regarded as the age of innovation. It is regarded as the time when mankind has actually broken the barriers set by nature and tried to expand its horizons to try and do things which were previously regarded as impossible. We have had this in these last hundred years, illiteracy in the world being brought down. Education has spread in the nooks and corners of the world. We have had universities and educational institutions produce or harvest and harness the brightest minds across the globe and release them as doctors, engineers, lawyers, uh, people who are politicians, people who are bureaucrats and technologists, industrialists who have been creating the world that we live in. So in a lot of ways, in these last hundred years, the most brilliant minds of our century have been the ones who have been creating the world that we live in. But yet, paradoxically, we find that we have been left with the most formidable problems that possibly Earth has ever seen till today. And I think Amitav uh, just highlighted one of these major problems that we are facing, most formidable problem that the IPCC said we have only seven years or between seven and ten years to solve. And it seems uh, very daunting that whether we will actually be able to address it within seven or ten years. So I think uh, in some ways there seems to be a gap between what we have been producing, what we have been doing, and how we have been designing this world, and uh, what has resulted. So I thought that I will engage in a conversation with you and together we can try and walk ourselves through uh, to try and discover if there is something uh, that we need to change about how we look at, approach our problems. 
So I think one of the first very interesting things is that uh, today, wherever you go, whether you are in uh, your workplace or whether you go for a conference or a meeting, one of the things that is almost ubiquitously present is this, right? I think there is no place, in fact, if you go to a government office, you usually find there is at least one room full of these bottles. Last time I visited the Mantralaya in Mumbai, I was shocked to see a room which, is, which was about twice this size, uh, which was full of these bottles. And of course, uh, the, where did these, what are these bottles, you know, I mean, these are a solution, right? These, these were brought in as a solution to the fact that municipal water suddenly was found to be undrinkable. Somewhere in the 80s, we started deciding that this municipal water can't be trusted anymore and we can't drink out of the tap. As a child, I remember uh, everywhere that I went, we only drank out of the municipal tap supply. It's unimaginable today to close our eyes and say that I can drink out of a municipal supply. And it's somewhere a sad testimony to the fact as to what, how we have solved this problem. Okay, we solved the problem of municipal water supply by creating a solution. This solution, interestingly enough, is the problem of today. I think we all recognize that these bottles, after we consume the water in them, end up in rivers and then finally in the sea. They end up in waste dumps and they have literally captured the space and taken over polluting all our environment completely. More interestingly, we believe that this water is portable. But if you look at this little fine print, nowhere does it say this is drinking water or this is actually water which is drinkable. It doesn't tell you the source. It doesn't tell you that this is any better than the municipal water supply. But we blindly, almost blindly, go and pick up one of these bottles, consume maybe a third or half of it and throw the rest away. Uh, this grew in the 1980s from a zero, almost nil market to something like 160 billion rupee market in India. So in 2017, this was about 160 billion rupee market and it's still growing. So you can see we have built up an industry with a solution to the municipal water issue across the country. <coughs> Interestingly, uh, when you look at this again and you, we decide that this is going to be the solution to our water issue, we don't think about where this water comes from and what it has done to the sources of this water. So initially, and still, a lot of this water may be coming from freshwater streams and wells, most of which are being overexploited in order to supply drinking water supply, these drinking water bottles. So when these are overexploited, naturally, the sources of this water are also getting dry, and as they get overexploited, the manufacturers turn to municipal water and polluted water sources in streams. And just because we don't know where it comes from, and it's in this bottle, which looks very nice, we assume it's perfect. Also, somewhere between one and a half to six liters of water are wasted for every liter of water that is supplied in these bottles. So we are actually wasting more water at a time when water has got, drinking water has got scarcer and scarcer across our country. So 
think next time you want to consume this. The other interesting thing that has happened is that the plastic from which these bottles are made has a binding agent. And every time that this is exposed to sunlight, the binding agent actually is released. And when this is discarded into the river and it gets heated up and then cooled and the binding agent is released, it goes into the water. And this binding agent is very similar to the thyroid hormone that is released in our bodies by our thyroid gland. So it mimics the hormonal system in our body. Such chemicals are called as endocrine disruptors. So somewhere in 1995, researchers of the World Wildlife Fund discovered endocrine disruptors when studying uh, fish in the streams of Canada. What they discovered was these fish where fish populations were on the decline despite the fact that these streams did not seem to be polluted. And then they discovered that there were, there were chemicals which were released, which were not regarded as pollutants, but which were mimicking the hormonal system of these fish. So as a consequence, the fish populations were on the decline. Interestingly, uh, this research led on to discovering a whole class of chemicals which are there in our day-to-day -day life, which mimic our hormonal system. If you see that in the district of Solapur, few years back, it was discovered that the cattle no longer breed and give rise to calves because they are feeding on the water of the Mula and Mutha, which flows from Pune. So, after uh, discussions, they realized that it is endocrine disruptors which are pay playing havoc with the reproductive cycle of these cattle. And it's not just the cattle, but it's also the humans whose reproductive system that endocrine disruptors are playing a havoc with. So, here is the solution for the problem of yesterday. The problem that we are not able to produce municipal water which we can drink. Okay. So here is my exhibit number one. Okay. Our solution of yesterday which is our problem of today.